So I recently made a video where I talked about this unusual motor I had built and how I was hoping it would be much more efficient than a conventional motor based on the idea that I had a lot more magnets on my armature and a much bigger coil going around the outside of it. Well, the results I achieved weren't all that impressive. It didn't seem to be any more efficient than any other conventional DC motor. And so I, I started thinking about maybe I should add more wire to the uh, form here. And I was looking over at this big spool of wire here and I thought how laborious it would be to have to spend a few hours winding all this wire back up onto the spool here. And I did something a little different instead. I began unwinding a lot of the wire that I had already on here back onto the spool here. And in the process of doing so, I thought to myself, you know, let me see what happens if I hook it up now with a lot less wire. I probably removed about two thirds of the wire I had going around this form here. And, um, let me hook it up now and see how much slower the uh, magnets turn. Well, much to my surprise, these magnets actually started turning a lot faster. And I, I was uh, kind of surprised to see that, but at the same time, I remember from some of my previous experiments that any time a magnet turns inside of a coil, it produces an opposing magnetic field, lowering the current flow going into the coil, known as counter-electromotive force. And so with less wire, I'm actually able to develop more speed in fact, I'm going to hook this up so you can see. By the way, keep in mind, when I hook this up, this coil here is still in series with this coil. I just got this going from here, around here, and back over to my batteries and commutator. And so we have the same amount of DC resistance. I suppose the inductive reactants might be a little bit different because we're on a coil like this rather than spread out. But other than that, not much has changed. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up here. Give it a little spin. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell by the video, but this is spinning a lot faster than it did yesterday. So, just some food for thought. I know there's a common uh, mode of thinking out there that a lot of people that have watched the experiments of Joe Newman uh, have concluded that having a bigger coil is going to guarantee you're going to get a stronger motor or a more efficient motor. Well, maybe he's onto something I'm unaware of, but this is one of those things that kind of made me doubt what he was doing. And... Uh, Anyway, I just thought it was worth showing here. Again, you can see the magnetic field there. Pretty impressive how far that goes out. Oop, oop, oop. There's another thing. It, look, look at the difference having a core inside this coil here makes. Pull that out, you get nothing. Anyway, I thought that was something worthy of making a video about. I know there's a lot of guys out there that are still experimenting with these ideas, and unless you've actually taken the time and built something like this, you may not be aware of all the different governing effects that control the speed of a motor and its potential uh, power output. Well, I thought this was a good demonstration that maybe will save somebody from uh, spending the money and taking the time to, uh, to build a bigger one. Then again, I guess until I make something on the scale that Joseph Newman used to do, uh, I can't really invalidate everything he said. Very controversial guy, as I said in my previous video. Um, some thought of him as a con man, others thought of him a genius. He seemed to have a lot of men with scientific backgrounds that were backing him, so I don't know. Decide for yourself, I guess. I wonder if this magnet will affect the video if I put it close here. I better be careful, I don't want my camera getting sucked into this thing. Anyway, as always, I hope you liked the video.